What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2024 Mercedes-Benz E350 sedan, courtesy of Mercedes-Benz of Hagerstown in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So this is the all new generation E-Class. It has been redesigned for 2024 with more technology, more luxury, and more power, of course, as well. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering fuel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. It says, you can imagine there are a couple different configurations for the new 2024 E-Class. First one, you got the premium trim level starting at $63,350. Then you got the pinnacle starting at $67,740. But regardless of the configuration that you go with, the power plant on the new E350 is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a two liter turbocharged four cylinder with a mild hybrid system, putting out 255 horsepower, 5,800 RPM, 295 pound feet of torque coming in at 2,000 RPM. Power being sent to all four wheels through Mercedes-Benz's 4MATIC all-wheel drive system. Power being sent to the ground through a nine-speed automatic with paddle shifters, which you guys know, of course, we will be testing on here in a little bit. Zero to 60 time, approximately 6.1 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 24 in the city, 33 on the highway, taking premium unleaded fuel. That's an actually pretty impressive MPG numbers there. But before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the E-Class, do want to mention to you guys the drive modes. It's labeled dynamic. It's located just underneath of the infotainment screen. Drive modes will include eco, sharp, sport, and individual, adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, steering sensitivity, and actually the all-wheel drive system engagement then as well. So now that we got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and put the paddle shifters and acceleration here to the test. I want to see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react for us, and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 E350 here up to speed. Paddle shifter test, go! There's a slight delay, but dang, do these paddle shifters feel heavy duty, man. These aren't some cheap little plastic things. This has a very nice feel to it, I will say that. Luxury-like paddle shifters, I guess you would expect that from Mercedes-Benz, but it's interesting. Yeah, not the quickest paddle shifters, they weren't bad, but they're not AMG quick. I'll just put it that way, but very, very high quality paddle shifters. That's something I'm not used to seeing, so well done Mercedes-Benz, but well, I just, Ended up doing that separately. Let's now go ahead and find one more straightaway. Let me put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, eight, three, two, one, go. Ah, there it is. <laughs> yeah. That will definitely pin you in the back of your seat. That was fun, man. Like, I don't know, there was a little delay at, at, at the very get go, but then it just launches you. So once it hits that sweet spot, you really get going. So you're not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 12.7 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.8 inch solid rear discs. As far as the braking feel goes, since there's nobody behind us, it's not bad. Not the very firmest braking feel. I would definitely say it leans on the softer side. It's a soft braking feel. It's more of a luxury braking feel, I would say. So it kind of feels like an SUV, honestly, as far as the braking feel goes, at least. So um, it's what I would expect with the E-Class. It's not an AMG firm braking feel. It's more of a luxury braking feel yet again. So anyways, then touching on suspension and handling, you will find an independent front and rear suspension, of course, gas pressurized shock absorbers, but you also get an adaptive damping suspension. Yes, that comes standard on the E-Class. You guys know I love an adaptive damping suspension. The reason why is because it monitors each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the rotor perfections, giving you a smoother ride, but it also tightens up that suspension during heavy quartering, giving you better handling as well so it does give you the best of both worlds and that isn't something that always comes standard actually the majority of the time it does not come standard even on luxury vehicles so the fact that it comes standard that's pretty darn cool but if you wanted the ultimate in ride quality there is an added option called the aromatic package that goes for thirty two hundred dollars but that of course gives you the air suspension so when you pair that up with adaptive damping suspension you will have the very best ride quality humanly possible in case you were curious about that but not only that the aromatic package it also gives you 
4.5 degree rear axle steering at speeds below 37 miles per hour, which by the way, I first saw on the Maybach S-Class back in the day. So that is a pretty darn cool feature. It's wild seeing it in person. But anyways, as far as ride quality goes, obviously it is super smooth. Like uh, we are going over some smooth roads right now, but having just got done driving a car that is the complete opposite of this, this is ridiculously smooth ride quality. It's absolutely amazing. As far as steering feel goes, it's kind of weighted on the heavier side of things, but let me do, uh, let me go ahead and take it out of that sports steering feel. And it does loosen up 100%. So it's a little bit something for everybody, depending on what you're going for in terms of steering feel. Um, it's either a heavier steering feel or a looser steering feel, depending upon the drive mode, really. But as far as cabin noise goes, we're going 48 miles per hour right now over a bridge. It's actually been intensely serene <laughs> my short little test drive here today that's a odd way of describing it but of course it is a super serene cabin in our new e-class gotta love it then touching on rear visibility i can see 100 perfectly fine out of the back because of the shape of this sedan you're definitely not going to have any issues there did would also mention that rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on the e350 so if the e-class detects any kind of mist or rainfall it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you so you got to love that as well head-up display with real-time navigation is going to be available and there's a digital light package i wanted to mention this to you guys it goes for 990 dollars. but in terms of visibility this contains more than 1 million pixels per headlamp so think of it as extreme brightness at night so if you wanted the best visibility at night specifically they got a package option for that but anyways that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 mercedes-benz e350 all right so here she is you guys the new 2024 mercedes-benz e350 finished in verde silver metallic if i remember correctly from high school spanish class i believe verde is spanish for green and it does look kind of like a mint green in person hopefully it's coming across that way on camera as well but pretty darn cool color i like it but as always let's go ahead and start with where this one is made taking a look at the vin first character is the letter w indicating that the mercedes-benz e350 is built and assembled in germany gotta love it but like i said previously this one has been completely redesigned for the 2024 model year including a reworked front fascia and reworked headlight housings as well so speaking of led headlights with led daytime running lights do come standard get the automatic feature of course along with automatic high beams so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up the high beams for you there of course you have that iconic mercedes Benz front grille, Diamond Star front grille, now available with LED edge lighting. That is an option if you wanted to go that route. So that is pretty darn cool. And actually it looks like as I get up a little bit closer, we got that option. So that is going to look so sick at night. I don't know how it's going to look right now, but at night i think that's gonna look pretty darn cool and to the bottom corners there you got a little bit of front air curtains as well helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination giving a little better aerodynamics there too but i love it let me know what you guys think of the rework design for 2024 in the comments section below i think it looks good but that pretty much rounds out the front end let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right so now since we are around to the side of the e-class here chrome window surrounds do come standard gotta love this flush door handles as well and by the way it is a uh, keyless entry so if you have the key in your pocket when you get like 10 feet away those door handles will automatically pop out for you it's pretty darn convenient and then that's how you get in, in case you were wondering since they are flushed or you could just press the little button on the door handle too but anyways several wheel designs are going to be available 18 inch triple five spoke aluminum alloys do come standard but so many different wheel configurations available for the e-class and typical mercedes fashion there take a look at the side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors they are heated with led integrated turret signals and of course they are power folding as well so when you lock this one up they're going to automatically fold in when you unlock they're going to fold back out so gotta love it but anyways that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now since we we are around to the back of this one specifically on the redesigned e-class there's one thing i love back here one thing i don't love so much but redesigned led tail lights with the mercedes-benz star inside that is what i absolutely love on this redesign that looks so dang cool the fact that they integrated the star logo into the tail lights right there so 
big fan of that. And again, they're LED, so they're super bright at night. We do have LED license plate lighting as well, so that is pretty cool. You got a little bit of a rear diffuser down below, but to the sides, Mercedes-Benz will want you to think that there are dual exhaust outlet cutouts that are actually functional to the corners there, but that's not true. It's all a lie. They actually hide it underneath. I'll see if I can get a kind of a slide shot for you guys or something, but dual exhaust outlets with fake chrome tips. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. Alright, so now since we are around to the back of the E-Class, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, it is going to be a power trunk. It is also a hands-free power trunk, by the way, so that is pretty darn cold. But there is a button on the key fob, and there is a rubberized button on the trunk itself then, as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 19 cubic feet, which, by the way, blows away last year's E-Class. Last year's E-Class, the 2023 model, came in at 13.1 cubic feet, so substantially more space in the redesigned 2024 E350 here. But you do have a little bit of netted storage found in the back corner there. There's chrome-plated tie-down anchors as well. That was pretty dark cold. We actually have a grocery bag hook back there. I liked seeing that. And if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are going to find a decent amount of in-floor storage. So you could put an ice scraper back there or uh, if you wanted to conceal something else, that's fine as well. So that is pretty darn cool. But then making our way up to the rear legroom, that comes in at 35.8 inches. For reference, I am even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the back there. Rear center armrest with the phone holder and cup holders. Somebody actually commented that on one of my previous Mercedes-Benz videos. Wally, shout out to you, buddy, because you told me that there was cup holders if you just pressed it in a little bit and it comes back out. And I did that and you were right. I had no idea. So that's kind of rare that I come unprepared on vehicles when I'm reviewing though. But that one, Wally, you got me. So thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Rear ventilation does come standard and you do have USB charging ports down below all of that as well. And some coat holders as well. Anyways, then make your way up to the front seats. Mercedes Mercedes-Benz Tex upholstery does come standard. Leather options are available. It goes for around $1,620, I believe it was. So plenty of different color options there. Seats are power adjustable. Those are found on the doors, by the way, as opposed to the seat itself. If you're new to Mercedes, that's a little bit different. Heated front seats do come standard. You got memory settings for not just the driver, but the passenger as well. That's something Mercedes-Benz always does. I love that too. Overall, as far as seat comfort goes, it was okay. Uh, not quite as comfortable as Lexus F Sport seats. Those are still my favorite, but because the seams are vertical, there was no awkward pressure points. So I had no issues whatsoever in my short little test drive here. But then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is wrapped in a Napa leather. That comes standard. That's nuts. And it is actually heated as well. So that's even better. But then make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. It's a very heavy duty key. You got lock all the way on the top. That's the Mercedes Benz logo. Unlock just below that and the button pop the rear trunk there. But it is a keyless entry, as I said earlier, with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my phone in the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the infotainment screen. And so once started up, 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster does come standard. And I love it because if you press the home button on the left side of the uh, steering wheel, it gives you a bunch of different loadouts to really customize it and make it your own. So there's going to be a sport loadout that looks pretty darn cool. Also classic. You can choose to display a full navigation loadout up there if you wanted to, but I don't see the cool off-road loadout that Mercedes-Benz does in some of their other vehicles. Perhaps this isn't an SUV and that's why they didn't do it, but that would have been nuts if they put that on an E-Class, I guess. So anyways, bunch of cool loadouts. So I will say that. Of course, you got your outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, uh, digital speedometer, the list goes on. Pretty much everything you could possibly want on a digital gauge cluster, but then make our way to overall interior quality. Power sunroof does come standard. Got this really awesome fade to off interior lighting. Always like playing around with that in Mercedes Benz. It's the slowly fade on, slowly fade off. Uh, home light controls for up to three different garage doors found just underneath of our frameless rear view mirror. You gotta love that. You got some leatherette door trim inserts. That was definitely very nice as well. Wireless phone charger, multicolor ambient lighting, which Mercedes-Benz does an absolutely amazing job with as usual. Dual zoom climate control does come standard. There is also an M-Bucks super screen package that goes for $1,500. That gives you the 12.3 inch passenger display on that side. We don't have it with us here today, unfortunately. 
unfortunately, but that actually comes with a selfie and video camera uh, for, for them, I guess, which is kind of interesting. And uh, it's actually a coated screen, so it doesn't reflect light and distract the driver. I would have been interested to try to test that out to see if that's true or not, but we don't have this screen, unfortunately. We do have a very cool finish, though. It is illuminated star pattern, like the Mercedes-Benz logo found just above the passenger side glove box. That looks pretty darn cool as well because it will change color dependent upon the ambient lighting color that you adjust it to. So I actually think that looks pretty darn good, but a lot of matte wood trim kind of finishes surrounding the cup holders up front here. Within the center armrest, there's, uh, there's a little bit of space there. You got a USB charging port in there too. I like the aluminum button to actually open it up. That looks pretty darn good. And the aluminum speaker covers at that. We got an upgraded sound system, by the way. So wait until we test that out. I have a feeling that's gonna be absolutely amazing. But speaking of, let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen now. What you were looking at is a 14.4 inch color touchscreen display. So yes, it is massive. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay as well. Could check out your driving statistics up there if you wanted to. There of course is your uh, factory navigation system as well located up there. There's some climate control settings and of course your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound system, a Burmester 17 speaker 4D surround sound system does come standard with 730 watts, which is absolutely insane. So I'm excited for this one. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Mercedes-Benz did something different with that sound system that I've never experienced before. There is literally a subwoofer right behind my back in the driver's seat. I've never felt like there's massaging seats. I get that. Mercedes-Benz does massaging seats incredibly well. Um, but this is not massaging seats. This is a subwoofer literally right behind you. <laughs> it was rumbling the seat like massaging seats would. It's identical to a massaging seat, except, you know, it rumbled the seat to the base in the song. So... That was insane. Plenty of clarity, absolutely ridiculous amount of bass. They did bass wonderfully. So yeah, that's an incredible sound system. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the E-Class in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Panoramic view monitor there to the left as well, giving you that bird's eye view, letting you know what is completely all around you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start by saying IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus for the 2023 model year. 2024 has not yet been tested by IIHS, but typically from the pattern that I've seen in my last 900 plus reviews it only gets better with time so more than likely it'll be the same thing but don't take my word for it go ahead and check IIHS periodically and check for yourself but anyways front side side crew airbags do come standard driver's knee airbag as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors to tethers your children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard forward collision mitigation parking sensors active brake assist autonomous emergency braking and a blind spot assist system as well then if you were to go with the driver assistance package it goes for $1,950 by the way that gives you lane keep assist active distance assist steering assist traffic sign recognition and adaptive cruise control then as well so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the new redesigned e-class I think it looks absolutely amazing I'm curious to see what you guys think in the comments but specifically the taillight redesign with the Mercedes-Benz star logo found within the taillights I think that is such a cool little added touch but anyways that's just me new tech is cool as well with the passenger side a 12.3 inch screen I wish we would have had that that would have looked so dang cool but uh yeah, we don't have it, but it's okay. Ambient lighting is excellent as well. Mercedes-Benz always crushes it with the ambient lighting. Sound system is brilliant. I've never experienced a uh, bass rumbling through the seat like that. Like that is the number one thing this car has done different that I've never experienced before. So that was pretty darn cool. The only room for improvement I can really think of with this one is uh, that last safety package or driver assistance package. That should be standard. 90% of that comes standard on the Corolla. So I would think Mercedes-Benz would want to put it standard on this as well i don't know that's just my personal opinion but let me know what you guys think of the e-class in the comment section below that's about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold